My name is Magogo Visho Watene, and uh, I am a printer, what I do for a living. And I went to Pearson College many years ago, like uh, nearly 50 years ago. And, uh, and I came back to Nairobi after graduating from university. Uh, my dad uh, used to own, it's, it's not very big, it's about 16 acres, but uh, in terms of um, uh, these areas, because of population growth, 16 acres sounds like a lot of land. And uh, my father was a teacher, he was called uh, Watene, and uh, he, he had a special uh, liking for trees especially because he used to say that our soils are being washed all the way to the Indian Ocean. So he left a piece of land uh, that, was not, uh, that was not cultivated for, for food crops. He left it as a, as a small bush to hold the land from going to the sea. And uh, when I got back, I, I decided to, me and my brothers, we decided to extend the, my father's small bush and now we, are, we have dedicated about 4.3 acres for, for planting trees. And uh, we are not planting exotic trees, we are planting indigenous trees. And the, the reason why we are planting indigenous trees is because indigenous trees are very friendly to food crops. So you can plant uh, if you look around, you can see with indigenous trees, you can plant uh, maize, you can plant beans, potatoes, and uh, indigenous trees do not destroy the environment for the other crops. And uh, the reason why I, I really got uh, agitated about indigenous trees or motivated about growing indigenous trees is because there is a plant called Mudiga right up there, I'll show you. People came and uh, decided to cut the bark of the tree for medicinal purposes. And they cut so much of it that the tree was almost drying up. So that's what inspired me not to plant indigenous, uh, exotic trees. So to plant more indigenous trees as we learn about our indigenous medicine that came from trees. One thing about uh, increase of population is that uh, feeding that population becomes a problem. And although the area where I come from, the, the soil is fertile and, and, and it rains, but because of increase in population, the size of plots, the size of farms have grown smaller and smaller. And therefore you find people trying to grow food crops all the way to the river. And the problem with food crops is that the roots of food crops don't go deep enough to protect the soil from being washed away. So I thought maybe because uh, people uh, are growing food crops on, on the side, on the riparian, the riparian you know, al along the river, uh, we thought maybe that is why our rivers are drying up. And also that is, more reason why the soil is being washed away to the Indian Ocean. So we thought maybe we could encourage uh, our neighbors to grow indigenous trees along the riparian so that the indigenous trees can hold the soil and the water from disappearing so quickly all the way to the Indian Ocean. And uh, I have some neighbors who have agreed and uh, we'll be encouraging them to grow indigenous trees along the riparian. And the, there's a thought I had that uh, because they, they, their interest is food, what they are growing uh, along the river, maybe if, if you encourage them along the way, uh, I give them free seeds, free seedlings. Uh, and the seedlings I get from Kenya Forestry Service. And I grow them to, to, to trees, to, to seedlings. Uh, and then I give the seedlings free to my neighbors so that I can, I can encourage them um, to grow indigenous trees along the riparian. And then uh, I was thinking maybe uh, somewhere along the line, if you come maybe one year later and you found that the seedling that you gave to your neighbor is still alive, maybe I could give him a small token 
and, and tell them, oh, your tree is still alive, I'll, I'll give you two dollars or something like that. And then if we do that along this river and it's successful, we can do two other rivers in, in, in the county, in Kenya. And with, with the 30 meters on either side of the river, that is the riparian, if you plant many trees, indigenous trees, then we can reclaim our rivers. Maybe we can even fish again. Sometimes you don't think what you are doing has anything to do with all this talk about climate change. But um, when I was thinking about it, even when it's very hot, like now I'm sitting in the sun and my bald head is getting burnt, but when there's a tree nearby, you go to the shade and you hide from the heat of the sun. And um, I was thinking, you know, that tree has made where it is cooler. So if you have my neighbors having more trees in addition to what I have, the local level of the tree is cooler. So you have more neighbors and more neighbors growing trees. You localize the tree to a larger area. What about if all Kenyans had five trees in their household? Then the, loc the localized tree climate can be extended to the whole country. And I, I think it makes a lot of sense to plant trees, not just for, um, for medicine, not just for preventing soil erosion, but also for, also for changing the climate. So um, as I was saying, indigenous trees allow us to grow other crops where they grow. And here we, we have cassava, we have sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes, bananas, and these indigenous trees do not destroy uh, the other crops. They seem to be very accommodating. And uh, we also grow, I'll take you to some other, some other place where we grow avocados. And the good thing about avocados is that they are fruits and they are trees as well. So they influence the local environment and you also can make a little bit of money from avocados when the market is good. Before, um, before people started replanting trees, reforestation, uh, and, and it's reforestation because, as I was saying, if a neighbor plants five trees and another one five trees, in the end, the whole area looks as if it's reforested. And uh, many animals have come back. We have monkeys, we have baboons, we have um, even uh, gazelles, they've come back. And uh, the problem with that, of course, is that uh, we keep fighting with them because they eat what you have planted. So by the time you, the, the food, food crops are just about to be harvested, then they come in and eat all of them. But uh, we are happy that uh, Kenya Wildlife Services, uh, they, they come and uh, they've been scaring the animals away. But it, it really means that uh, what we are doing is also attractive to, to, to other wildlife, even birds. Even birds, you have many species of birds that have come back that you hadn't seen for many years. Yeah, it's quite amazing. Yes. And uh, our neighbors, uh, if you look across the ridge, uh, when there was no reforestation, you could actually see the red soil. Uh, but today, when you, when you look uh, across the ridge, you see trees, greenery. So it has really had a, a perfect, um, uh, a really admirable outcome. <laughs> Nakuja <laughs> environment yetu. Yes, Wangari Mathai uh, was uh, an environmentalist who started the Green Belt movement. 
at the Green Belt Movement, uh, they, they were planting the seeds and distributing seeds to, to farmers in the villages. And that's why, why the transformation has happened. And uh, she won the Nobel Peace Prize sometimes in year 2002. And uh, that has really encouraged people to respect trees. The only problem is that uh, because of increase in population, now the pressure for food is also there. And, uh, but her inspiration is what has led to the greening of the environment. Mm -hmm.